Welcome to the next lecture of our course Selenium with C-Sharp.net and in this lecture we'll be talking about n-unit attributes pretty much the continuation of our last lecture. If you remember in our last lecture while we were talking about the n-unit attributes pretty much like the setup attribute, the test attribute and the teardown attribute we saw how the test easily managed to perform the setup operation in one place run the test and once the test executions are completed it called the teardown attribute automatically to quit the Selenium web driver. So this is quite awesome because this is how the NUnit test framework does all these jobs. And it's all happening because of the attributes available in the NUnit framework. And today we'll see some more attributes which are available in NUnit, which will make our life even more easier. And one of them is going to be the test fixture attribute. So you can see there is something called as test fixture and test fixture source. But I'll go with the test fixture for now because test fixture source is going to be a bit more toward the data driven testing. While we will talk about data driven testing using test data attribute, you'll understand how to work with that. But for now, this test fixture attribute is going to be very, very helpful. And this is going to be very, very helpful in combination with the parameter that you can pass in. So the test fixer attribute made optional in NUnit starting from version 3 of NUnit where you don't really have to pass the test fixer over here. But before NUnit 3 you need to pass this test fixer attribute as well in order for you to run the test as you can see over here. But right now this is optional. But they have also added some more options over here. So within the test attribute, you can actually say who is the author of this test and what is the category of this test and the description that you can add in here. You can add some more options like explicit, ignore, ignore reason, reason, test name, and things of that nature. And But also, you can add an arguments over here. Something like the value that you need to pass in for the whole test to be executed. So this one is quite straightforward. I will let you to do this one because it's pretty much like how you do like this. So you can set the property here like author as Karthik. So this will make this particular test author as Karthik over here. So I'm not going to deal with this particular overload of the test fixer attribute. Rather, I'm going to use this one, the params obj attribute. This is quite interesting because all you can do it over here is for example, if I want to use the admin as the username over here and the password as the password over here, if I want to pass it like the overall test method, I could do it something like this. So admin and then I can say password, something like this. And this way what will happen is this whole test will now start using it with this particular value, the admin and the password. But the way that you can do it is we also need to create a constructor. So in C sharp world, in order to create a constructor, you can just use the CTOR. And then once you hit enter, you see that there is this uh, broken box come in, which will help you create a code snippet for the constructor. So we can hit this enter here, and you will notice that it's gonna create a constructor for you. So this is called as a default constructor in C sharp world. So we can use this one to actually create two parametered constructor. So one is the string of username and another one is the string of the password. But in order for you to access this username and password from the constructor within the test method, we need to create a private read only variable so that you can access it. Pretty much like how we did for the driver if you remember in our last lecture, that's what we need to do. So you can probably write like private read only string of an username, something like this. And because this is going to be an private, so you can just say underscore username and same thing you can do for the password or something like this. Or in Visual Studio, you can just go over here and hit control enter. And you will see that it's going to bring you something like create and assign a property. Do you see that it's also showing you what is gonna happen over here? Or you can also create and assign a field like this, like username. So this is also another shortcut that you can use within Visual Studio, which will make your life even more easier. And I'm gonna use this shortcut this time. You see that the username has been added and even the password is going to be added. So I'm going to add two fields over here. So I can use these two username and password right now within my test. 
as username and the password as the password. So what will happen right now is that I'm going to use the username and password from the test fixture itself. So let's try to run this test and see if that really works. So if I execute it, you'll notice that the browser has spawned and it enters the username and password as admin and password as password, which is great. So it's all coming because of this test fixture. So if I just try to paste it over here, like three value, and if I say in the next test, I want to use the password as password two, and the second test with password as password three, something like that. So it pretty much like data driven testing to be honest, but you don't necessarily have to do it this way, but I'm just showing you an example. But I will also tell you where you need to use this test fixture in effective way but at least just to prove the point that this is how the test fixture actually works so you see that the first test got executed sorry I need to probably execute the whole test so you can see that now it is opening the browser for a second time and it enters the wrong password so you see that there is an invalid attempt and then it is running again and it's trying to enter the password with password two it's so again a wrong attempt and the test actually fails uh, but it, we don't really have anything like a, a failing or the passing test because we don't really do any assertions over here at the moment so you can see that it's all just passing so this is how you can see that we can use the test fixture in any unit and there is one more attribute that we can use is so let me get rid of this one uh, and that is going to be the test case attribute. So you can also say something like a test case and over here you can actually pass more parameters as well. So let me get rid of this for now and let me write it on another test and I'm going to say test case So this attribute and you can actually supply the value over here. So pretty much like the param obj of the argument. So you can pass like Chrome and version as 30 or something like that. Then I'm gonna say public wide test browser version. And over here, I can just say string browser version, uh, or maybe browser uh, and string of the version. So now what happens is you can just try to do a console.write line. And here you can just try to print what is the browser and its value. So it's pretty much like the data driven testing that you can do from the test case itself. So not from the test fixture, but we can actually do it from the test case over here. So I'm going to say the browser is uh, browser with version something like this. So I'm just going to using the string interpolation over here to do this operation. Cool. I'm going to save this and let me try to run this test over here. So it just opens the browser and does nothing because we have the before test and after test. And you see that it just closed the browser without doing anything. But if you see over here, it says the standard output as the browser is Chrome with version is 30 because we have the test case data over here so this is how things will actually work with n units test case attribute the last thing which i wanted to show you is how that you can run this whole test in a command line interface so if i just open this whole test in a terminal so i'm just going to say open in terminal which is this one and let's say i wanted to execute this whole test from the command line so i can just say dot net test so if I just do a .NET test, it is going to execute all the test which is sitting within my folder over here, which I don't really want it to do it. Let's say I want to only execute a specific test. For example, let's say smoke test that I want to execute because that's what we do most of our time, right? We wanted to execute some smoke test or regression test in any unit. So how do I actually do it? Well, there is another attribute which we have called as category attribute of any unit. So this category attribute will help you say what you wanted to do. For example, smoke over here. So once you'd say it is smoke, so this test is responsible for running a smoke test for you. And now if I want to run this in command line, how do I actually do it? Well, the way I can do it is I can just specify .NET test 
and then I can specify hyphen hyphen filter and over here in the filter I'm gonna say category is equal to smoke and if I hit enter it is going to run the test for me just this specific test not the entire test do you see that it opens the browser and it should perform the login operation there we go and you can see that the test has got passed over here and it has executed and this is happening because of the category that we have specified as smoke so if i don't specify the category as smoke and if i try running the dotnet test just in brevity i'm just doing it i'm telling you that it is going to open quite a lot of tests this time you see that this is the first test and it is running another test over here. So it's open another browser. It's doing it. And it's gonna keep running multiple different tests over here. Because we have not specified the category, so it's gonna keep doing the exact same thing again and again. So this is how we can work with NUnit framework in c .net, And this is what we'll be using quite a lot in our Selenium automation testing. And we'll be discussing even more about in unit framework while we talk about data driven testing in our next lecture.